Peter is closing out his first letter to the churches, and he says, May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle. After you've suffered a while. Oh, I thought Christians weren't supposed to suffer. I thought when we got saved, they're going to roll out the red carpet and life was going to be like, whoo, smooth. All these other Christians are smiling. What's wrong with me? I want to be in the happy Christian club. Amen? Amen? After you've suffered a while, all I want to know is how long is a while. Give me that one, and we're, we're ready to go then, right? Amen? He didn't say how long. He just said a while. But after you've suffered a while, may the God of all grace, that's how you get through the suffering part, grace, may he perfect, that means mature you. It doesn't mean make you so that you're without imperfections or that you're flawless in some fashion, but may he mature you, complete you, make you whole and complete. That's what the Greek says. Establish, strengthen, and settle. I'll take some of that perfecting, I'll take some of that strengthening, and I'll take some of that establishing and settling. I thought reading this for years that it was just redundant to say the word establish and then say the word settle. But I learned that those are two different Greek words interpreted in the Old English to sound almost the same, but they're not even close to the same. One has to do with foundations being securely fixed and planted. You know, a lot of Christians can't ever grow and bear fruit because they don't know who they are. They don't know where they are. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They jump from church to church to church. And, and it's okay to, to visit churches and get fellowship from other places. But if you spend your Christian walk just going from place to place to place, you're drinking from too many fountains. You'll never get a father in the ministry to, to really father you. You'll never get planted in the family. You'll never bear the fruit of the Spirit because you've got to get rooted and established. And I've watched this for my entire life, and I can tell you it, it's 100% accurate. You need to get still, get settled, get in a place where people are moving at the same and the right pace that you're moving at so you can grow and go in God and, and love and be loved and be accountable and, and that sort of thing. So he will settle you and then establish is a different, different word. It has to do not with digging deep roots. It has to do with direction. Wow. May the God of all grace perfect you, strengthen you, and give you clear direction. Oh, that's a good one. That's one where we all need some grace. Amen? Because we need clear direction. I heard somebody say one time, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably never get there. Amen? And you'd be surprised how many people live their life that way. They lead their family that way. They have no vision for their family. Heads of households in this room, you need a vision for your family. Otherwise, who knows where they're going to end up. I don't know why my kids, came, yeah, my, my kids won't do this and they won't do that. Well, you can't follow somebody that's not leading. Amen. My wife won't submit to me. She don't know where you're going. Lay a clear vision out for her. Tell her the plan. Show her the way. Be a leader. 
Be strong. Give direction. Let the God of grace give you direction. And she'll come right alongside you and follow you and love with you and lead with you. That's right. I wouldn't lie to you. We need a vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. There's a lot of perish going on because we lack this whole deal of direction. Where are we going? Amen?